been done and Zach Wheeler is here to stay guys happy Monday it's a great day here on PHY Philly's podcast because we've got a Zach Wheeler extension to finally talk about as the news broke this morning plus we have to talk Blake Snell Jordan Montgomery recap the weekend injuries a cold that's going around Clearwater and much more here and Liam Castellanos might get included in that conversation welcome into the show Chris Lemmer number one in the chat Nice to, to have be, you here. Huh? You are really, you know what? You continue to raise the bar, Chris, and we appreciate that from you. Chris, Kim, happy Monday, Will. Uh, what's up, everybody? Nice to have you guys in the chat. Tyler Zuli, Jamie Lynch, myself, Renee Washington. We've got Mickey Durkin. We've got Dave P. Listen, not only are we nine days away from our trip to Clearwater, 24 days away from opening day, but... Now zero days away from having to wait for a Zach Wheeler extension. I'm so happy that the news broke this morning before our show. Of course, the press conference is going on as we speak, and our own John Foley is in person grabbing a, a nice video for you guys from the press conference. We've, we've got updates that will be coming out from it. And so, uh, Tyrone, nice to have you here as well. Listen, the news broke today that... Zach Wheeler and the Phillies have agreed to terms on a three-year contract extension that begins in 2025 and runs through 2027. As the news broke, um, at the end of that three years, we'll have a 37-year-old Zach Wheeler at the end of his $126 million extension. And of course, with, with sources saying... As we break down the numbers, the $42 million AAV represents the highest in Phillies franchise history and the highest in Major League Baseball history among extensions. Making history, making this extension happen this early in spring training, we knew it was a priority for the Phillies. They get it done, and now it's one more thing, a major thing we can cross off the to-do list heading into uh, the start of opening day 24 days from now, Jamie. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular because um, I don't give a damn about John Middleton money at all um so whatever uh i think it's fair <laughs> it's the exact deal we talked about uh here on air uh, and speculated about is it going to be the scherzer and verlander deal because you know approaching your early 30s you don't want to be tied to them for you know a five or six year deal mm -hmm. you don't want to pitch her into their 40s because scherzer and verlanders are, are rare in this world um so i think it's perfect you know you're going to have to pay a higher annual average uh, to get it done on a short-term deal. Uh, it basically works out now. You have Zach Wheeler for four more years. If you yes. balance the four years out, it's $36.6 uh, per year uh, because they got such a great deal the first time they signed him. Uh, you can't do that for tax purposes, but relatively, he's here for four more years uh, and around $150 million. So it's uh, yes. it's it's a home run deal. This is... Not only one of the best signings, well, not this one, when they first signed him, one of the best signings in franchise history. The guy has gone out and proven he's a top five pitcher in Major League Baseball, and he's one of the best playoff performers alive. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he got paid for it. He really does love it here, as he said he does. And uh, it's great, you know, when you go into the offseason season. Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler are locked up. You don't have to worry about it. And now your top free agents next year are like Matt Strom. So, yes. you know, Zach Wheeler was going to be the top pitcher on the market. And now you don't have to sweat that out. It's nice that it's done in spring training and it's it's off his mind. And you can just go try and win a World Series now. Yeah. So with this deal, uh, Zach Wheeler now will also be the fourth highest AAV salary among starting pitchers in baseball history. And what makes this all better, guys, we're missing like the bigger point, I feel like, of not only having this deal happen so soon. I know in the chat, Dave Dorr, Kim, Chris, you guys are talking about it's such a great deal, such a great move. Tyron saying, also, Zach and his wife, Dominique, just welcomed their third child. Dad strength. Yes, and Zach Wheeler came back this Saturday. And originally, actually, it's, it's ironic, before the news happened, 
I had planned for, you know, coming into the day to talk about the fact that Zach Wheeler's back. He came back from paternity leave on Saturday, you know, after welcoming his third child. And that was what I thought was the exciting Zach Wheeler news. Well, no, not only does he have the dad strength, uh, talk about providing and, and being able to have some great news to bring home to your family of like, oh, by the way, cha-ching, 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 uh, my price tag just went up too. So a very fun time in the Wheeler household, wheeling and dealing for sure. Baby boom, money boom. Uh, go play the lottery at this point. This is like a great week, I feel, a great time for Zach Wheeler and his family. So exciting to see because as we've talked about on the show, when you look at Zach Wheeler's postseason play it alone, and I know that's why I had him so high on my starting pitcher ranking, Zach Wheeler, as we've all talked about, when it comes crunch time, you can rely on him, and he's someone that you didn't want to have even sticking a toe out into the free agency market. So knowing that he's been locked in, and now that's one less stressor he can just focus on you know, the Phillies and, and, and the now instead of having to worry about the future. Fans, you guys don't have to worry about the future. We don't have to continue to talk about when will it happen, will it happen. It's done. It's locked in. And that closure allows us all to move forward. So I know, Chris, you're saying you think Zach's a top five Phillies pitcher in franchise history. There's a lot of great names in Phillies history that, honestly, we're going we're gonna to talk about that at some point. We're going to get into our overall rankings for Phillies history because when you look back over the years – Zach and some others on the current team definitely are in the mix right there. Um, hypothetical man, that's why he hasn't pitched yet. That is correct. Zach Wheeler was on paternity leave, which we love that. So, yeah, great times for Zach Wheeler. Yeah, and the other part of this, too, is there's a no-trade clause, which was requested in the contract. But, two, he's also going to get his 10-5 rights here uh, while in Philadelphia, which automatically kind of becomes because they did exercise that, which mm -hmm. it's like a double-secret secure no-trade clause for Zach Wheeler in this contract. So, it's clear he wants to be here. Um, you know, the 10-5 act, for those that don't know, is 10 years in Major League Baseball with over five years with at least one club. Um, so he's able to uh, basically block any trade proposals that happen. But because it's only a three-year deal, I don't think uh, at age 36 or age 37, Zach Wheeler is just going to fall off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, I think he, this is a guy. Hope not. Him and Aaron Nola, you know, they're, they're serious about pitching. Like, they put in the work. They take care of themselves. They eat right. You know, they do all the right stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're investing a guy that's in his prime, and you have to take a three- or more-year risk. Uh, it keeps him happy, obviously, with the 10-5 rights. Um, and, you know, like we said, what matters most here is how this dude shows up in the postseason. Uh, and our own John Foley put out a tweet that just reminds people um, in terms of postseason greatness. And we have a graphic we'll get to from Tyler in a second. Um, Zach Wheeler has the career best whip in postseason history uh, with a minimum, uh, I believe, 50 innings pitched. Um, he's ahead of Mariano Rivera, Kenley Jansen, Sandy Koufax, Christy Mathewson, who I just uh, watched recently in uh, Ken Burns baseball mm -hmm. around the turn of the century. Mm -hmm. um, so Zach Wheeler has showed up when it matters the most, and there's nothing more important come postseason baseball than just that dude you feel and the team feels is absolutely going to go down go out there and give you uh, an ace-like performance. And you have that in Zach Wheeler. So it's uh, it's pretty great. It's a pretty great day to be a Phillies fan. It is. It is. I know um, in the chat I was seeing there's nobody else. I forget who was saying it. I'll scroll through to find it. Uh, nobody else you'd rather have game one on the mound in the World Series. MBDBDBF is saying, yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to. Down the stretch, Zach Wheeler has, been, has shined brightest in the biggest moments. And when you look at his stats since joining the Phillies, he was a guy that I, you could see where he took so many leaps with the Phillies organization compared to past seasons. That's what makes it even better. So love the fact that you're getting Zach, um, you know, this opportunity to be locked in and also to put your trust in him. I know John Heyman was even saying this is this is why guys like playing in Philly, because the Phillies get things done. They don't leave any room for questioning or error or wondering. You know your value. You know that this team wants you. The guys want to be in Philly and the Phillies want the guys here. And so uh, it's exciting to see. And. I know Tyler's got that graphic done, so let's take a look at the numbers, Jamie, since joining the Phillies. Wow. Yeah, one of the best signings ever. 43-28 and 28 in 101 starts, 629 innings pitched. That's, that's workhorse stuff right there. Um, you know, a 3.06 ERA in modern-day baseball is tremendous for that sample size. A 1.05 whip, 675 Ks in 629 innings pitched. That is just tremendous. 
Uh, Tyler, my my old man eyesight is struggling on so line, la- line last three year. The, the the point that I was trying to highlight on that particular line is last year you talk about a guy who's getting to be 34 you start to think that maybe the velocity dips a little bit uh he had a 17 run value on his fastball last year and a career high in whiff rate on that fastball at 28 percent yeah the Mets really bungled this one it's pretty great to see thank you New York Mets for letting um the best pit well I don't want to say that because DeGrom but the second best pitcher uh, of that core four or five you had up there in New York, you let the second best one get away. And and we really thank you, New York, for for botching that one. Uh, postseason, as we talked about his greatness, he's four and three with a 2.42 ERA in 63 and a third innings pitch, 68 Ks in those 63 innings, and a .726 whip, which is the best in Major League Baseball history, uh, for a minimum uh, innings pitched uh, qualifier there. So uh, there's nothing to dislike about this. I haven't heard one. Uh, when, I, when I was driving in, it was on talk radio. I've been scouring Twitter and seeing what people, everybody's happy. Nobody has yeah. anything bad to say about this uh, because Zach Wheeler has earned that. Yeah. And I know, Kim, you're asking one of the most important questions that we forgot to hit on about the baby's name. Well, born on February 27th was almost the leap year baby, by the way. Uh, Winter Wheeler. The Wheelers welcomed another girl, so they now have a son and two daughters. And Winter, born on the 27th. Oh, uh, Winter's the name. Winter's the name. Oh. Yeah, Winter Wheeler. Okay. WW? Hopefully, I hope she has a middle name that also starts with a W. Like I've, I've Wendy. heard worse. You don't I, like Winter? I, it's okay. You know, I, I feel like if you're going to have one child named, named Winter, all your kids should have seasonal names. Like, just um, lock on in. Go, yeah. like, autumn, winter. Yeah. My cousin's wife was born around Christmas. Fall. Her name's Noel. It's not a... Okay. The first Noel? I like it. Y- yeah. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, you're born around Christmas, your name should be Noel. Yeah, it's or just like, seasonal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go seasonal. You go, you go there's a meaning behind yeah, it. Yeah, you're I born mean, around, there's a lot yeah. of names in uh, 2023 and 24. She was and kind of names. born in winter. I mean... It's the end of it's winter. The enter wi- end of winter, but There's worse. There's worse. Yeah, so Winter Wheeler. It's a nice name. <laughs> Uh, Dominique and Zach, congrats on winter. Um, yeah. There you go. Winter is coming! Yes. <gasps> That's why. Maybe they're a Game of Thrones fan. No, probably not. No, I don't see that either. <laughs> uh, hypothetical Man says, you know, when he took the ball out of the pen in Game 7... Uh, that was absolutely one of my favorite moments. Uh, Shame they didn't get it done for him. Uh, and that's the other part of him is like, this dude is, he's a mean mf out on the mound. Like, <laughs> he has got the attitude as well as the stuff. Like, he is, he's a big game pitcher. Uh, and it's really exciting. The Phillies got this done. And now you're kind of set. And yeah. now, Renee, it leads to the question, does the timing of this now allow them to jump into some other markets? Um it's going to be interesting to it see. Is. I I can't say no. We've talked about it this this whole off season here. Like the longer Jordan Montgomery and Blake Snell stay on the market, the more the Phillies' chances increase. Yeah. Well, before we even jump into that, I want to finish baking in the winter and the Wheeler. Um, well, not winter, but the Wheelers, uh, because. There was also the updated list now that Zach Wheeler's extension came out of the top 10 highest AAV in MLB history, guys. And as mentioned, Zach is in that group. (laughs) Otani. Let's start at number 10. He's one through four. So also out of LA, but with the Angels, Anthony Rendon, number 10. Let's just just kick off the list there with Anthony Rendon. Imagine getting paid that much money to hate playing (laughs) baseball. Top 10 in Major League, just again, Major League Baseball history that this list includes. So Anthony Rendon, number 10, uh, <laughs> 35 million. That's so bad. From that 2020 20 to 2026. Doesn't he have two or three years left? Yeah, it goes through 2026. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's not over yet, guys. God. All right. At number, well, also tied. He's, he's tied for number 10. Let me just clarify okay. that. So he just made the list. But also, Steven Strasburg is tied to Tim. <laughs> Ooh, those are bad. <laughs> also, who runs through 2026 because they had the same exact Oof. deal, 2020. To 2026. Listen, 2020 was not a great year for most of us, including for the Nationals and the Angels. Uh, Carlos Correa sits at number nine for the Twins, all around that 35 million, 100,000. Mike Trout, of course, at one point, which was a historic decision, 35 million. Then as we roll up, number seven, Garrett Cole. Uh, I'd say that worked out for the Yankees. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of worth the money. He's kind of good. Definitely makes sense at that 36 million for eight years. Jacob DeGrom. 
37 million for years with the Rangers. Um, also, at number five, and our boy Zach just clears him, is Aaron Judge, forty million dollars. I'd say that's fair from money twenty twenty three to thirty one. Yeah, he's kind of good at baseball yeah. too. Yeah, this list is getting better as we get higher. Zach sits at number four, of course, with his forty two million dollar deal through twenty twenty seven. Number tied for number two. Do you guys want to guess who's tied for number two? Not Otani, because I'm going to go. I'm going to go out on a limb <laughs> and say he's uh, one. I believe it's Justin Verlander. Verlander and Scherzer were both 42 or 43 per. Correct. That was an easy one. Both of them are tied at number two. Scherzer and Verlander are that 43, 43. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 mark. And then number one, Shohei Otani, because his $46 million adjusted, and they adjusted it for deferrals because we know there's even more included Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder how that worked out with <laughs> they like, the They actually listed as just $46 million dollars. Um, but we know it's much more than just that. So yeah, teams, uh, you know, don't want to. So if the Phillies, you know, before we get into that other discussion, a lot of teams try to. The Mets just kind of said like, "F this, we're just going to go drop a billion dollars and see what happens." They didn't really concern themselves with the tax threshold. Right. Uh, but I know like the Dodgers and stuff. You know, they were trying to stay under um, some certain thresholds. But the Phillies are very close to the next tax threshold. Um, so we'll see. Um, yeah. You know. The, there's going to be a lot of uh, talk about the timing of this and does it make sense for them to uh, go into that next tax threshold. Um, we'll see. Yeah. It's, it's exciting times in Philly's land. It is. It is. I know, Chris, you're saying that makes you want to vomit thinking of Rendon. Uh, Chris O'Donnell, you're saying pitching core of Wheeler, Nola, Ranger, Sanchez, Abel, and Painter should be one of the best in baseball in 2026. It, is, it does give you a lot to look forward to. And I know, Randy, you were talking about Blake Snell. And listen, we got to talk about Blake Snell, but it makes me want to crack open a Miller Lite before I even mm. get into talking about Blake Snell, Jamie. I had some Miller Lights <laughs> this weekend, Renee, because I had some friends and family over. And what better time uh, to have a Miller Lite than on a nice 63-degree day? I got some morning golf in, came home with the girls. Ah. Uh, some friends and family came over in the backyard, and I said, who wants a Miller Lite? Miller Lite here, Miller Lite. Uh, so it's a great beer. It's a it's the beer drinkers light beer. Uh, it's the great taste of Miller Light. Uh, a lot has changed over the years, but Miller Light has not. They've stayed with that quality, quality light beer that beer drinkers just tend to love. And as we, you know, officially go into spring and get ready for summer, it's going to be beach and pool season. And what better light beer to drink than one that just has 96 calories per 12 ounces? Uh, it's just, it tastes like a beer should taste. And you know what you're getting every single time with Miller Lite. Uh, and the beauty of Miller Lite is you can find it everywhere beer is sold. If you go into pretty much any bar or beer establishment in the world, Miller Lite will be waiting there for you like the good friend that it is. Uh, and it has a beautiful beer drinking clear finish. Uh, and it's great tasting and less filling. Uh, and it's pretty much all I'm looking for. If, uh, you know, friends and family are coming over, something that's not going to make me bloated and feel like a blob on the couch all day. And Miller Lite gives you that less filling taste. Uh, and Miller Lite keeps it simple. Undebatable quality, great taste, and yet only 96 calories. It's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. A light beer that tastes like beer should. Less filling and only 96 calories. The original light beer since 1975. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. Go to Miller Lite, de get deli Miller Lite delivered right to your door by visiting MillerLite.com slash P-H-L-Y fills, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. And you know what else can help you be responsible? And that's in the home buying process, Mortgage CS. So Mortgage CS, which stands for Mortgage Concierge Service. They are a white glove service located right here in Philadelphia. They are licensed coast to coast, though. So for those of you that are tuning in and maybe you live in Florida or you're over in California or across the country, or maybe you're just outside of Pennsylvania in Delaware or Maryland or New Jersey, well, Mortgage CS can still work with you because they're licensed coast to coast with various states and they do a great job. Now, one of the best things that they do that we enjoyed after having a chance to chat with them is they really are big on the customer service. They want to give you 24 seven access. If you have a question, if you want to talk about Zach Wheeler's extension or this decision to name his daughter winter, you can always reach out to them. Their CEO, Ben 
even gives you his phone number right here on your screen. Um, and for those that are listening on podcast platforms, it's 267-391-7425. You can also reach out via email, ben at mortgagecs.com. Ben and Alec over at Mortgage CS are always available. They want to make sure when you hear the word mortgage, you think of Ben, you think of Alec, you think of Mortgage CS. Available 24-7 to ask be able to ask any questions you have or reach out with any concerns and also just wanting to make sure that they are helping to educate and empower their clients. That's right. They want to help their clients find ultra competitive rates and make sure you're always prepared to stand out when it comes time to make an offer that works best for you and your family. They're focused on you and your financial picture, not their bottom dollar. And now that the spring purchase market is heating up because spring is coming. It's also time to get prepared, whether you're a first-time home buyer looking to buy that dream home, looking to just maybe upgrade or downsize, whatever it is, Mortgage Chess has you covered. And they also have you covered in terms of offering refinancing options, rate and term refinances for a rate payment reduction or cash out refinances for any project that you're looking to do. So get started today. Check out MortgageCS.com slash P-H-L-Y to be able to get started. And also know that this advertisement is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Mortgage CS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker. All loans are subject to credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. And the company NMLS ID number 146-4766. You can visit MortgageCS.com for more information. So uh, right, one of the first quotes came out here from Zach that's making its oh. round. He says, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Aww. We love you too, Zach. It's giving there's love no place you. like home with the feet tap. Yeah. Thank you, Dorothy. Um, so I love that. I love that. And yes, John and, and our own Chris were, were blasting out some quotes from the press conference. John's also going to have a piece about the Zach Wheeler extension as well coming soon, including quotes from the press conference. So stay tuned for that on our website at allphy.com. And we're also going to be dropping the full video in case you missed it because you're here with us and you didn't get a chance to watch it live. Don't worry. You can always watch it back after our show ends. All right. Well, I know Randy in the chat is talking with Vince and Mickey, different guys. You guys are talking through what the rotation could look like, because as we know, there are still the Boris four that's out there. Some big names that are still available on the market. And this past weekend, uh, for the first time in a very long time, we directly heard connections of Blake Snell to the Phillies. We had already heard Jordan Montgomery's name in the mix, um, but now it seems as though the Red Sox may be the favorite for Jordan Montgomery. But this past weekend, Bob Nightingale of USA Today did say that the Phillies would be open to bringing Blake Snell into the fold, but not on a long-term deal, a one-year pact or shorter-term contract would be the Phillies' preference or quite possibly the kind of three-year deal with multiple opt-outs that recently signed Cody Bellinger and Matt Chapman um, have been able to receive. So it appears that there might be potential to bring in Blake Snell on a smaller deal. There have been other reports that have indicated Blake Snell is favored to go to the Angels, the Giants. I know last week John Heyman was reporting that the Yankees and Blake Snell had another conversation exactly about a week ago, actually, but it was seeming as though the two parties were not able to find a common ground. And it was through that conversation that they had last Monday that it seemed that the Yankees and Snell are actually not moving closer. And quite the opposite, the chances of a deal happening with the Yankees for Snell are extremely low. Now, of course, this information came out this past weekend. I know I was ready to talk about it on the show today, Jamie. Like, oh, wow, Phillies might get Blake Snell. And then with the Zach Wheeler extension, it leaves you wondering, wait a minute, given how much they just spent... Will the Phillies actually go after Blake Snell? Now, of course, for this is so Jason gluttonous. Stark, it's great. I'm like trying to tee out all the information for you guys. Jason Stark did go on to say today, I've never heard anybody in the Phillies hierarchy say they have any interest in Blake Snell. You're giving up a draft pick, international money, and not to mention the contract that you signed him to. I can't see how it works for the Phillies. So some contradicting reports out there and as we know for anybody that signs Blake Snell right now you are putting your team financially into quite a pickle um, which is why he's been on the board for so long do you think that the Phillies would still go after Blake Snell I for do. a short-term deal I think John Middleton is very much in his uh f money go get me <laughs> my damn title back uh or trophy back and I think the only way this is realistic is if it's that one or two year deal whether it's Jordan Montgomery or Blake Snell um uh, you know, Scott Boris uh, might have some splaining to do to some <laughs> of his uh, clients because, you know, like apparently Jordan Montgomery 
turned down a, a, a pretty decent deal. Was that the Blue Jays, Tyler? Uh, according to some reports, he got offered like $140 million and turned yeah. it down. Uh, Cody Bellinger ended up taking, you know, a... a Mm, club a and little. team and and him friendly deal it was just a rumor tyler don't kill yourself <laughs> um but apparently you know scott boris i think teams are a little bit um kind of sick of his bs and overvaluing yeah. uh maybe his players to a degree and i think he's gotten away with it for a long time but now you see matt chapman take this three year only mm -hmm. 54 million dollar deal he thought he was going to get a lot more you know at the beginning of free agency blake snell was apparently going to get close to 200 um, and I think his clients are finding that the market isn't there for them. Uh, so that only helps the Phillies, you know, like, do I think they get either? I'm probably going to say no, but I do think there's a point because it is March 4th yeah. and pitchers are a little different because they can still throw on the side and yeah. stretch out and get loose. They don't necessarily need to be in camp, but you're getting to the point now where if this goes on for another week to 10 days, where these guys are probably going to miss the start of seasons. Exactly. Um, exactly. So it's getting, it's getting very time sensitive, and the more time sensitive it gets, the more likely the Phillies are, I think, to pay you know, $35 million for one year for a Blake Snell or something like that. Yeah. Um, Jordan Montgomery would get less, I think, but you're approaching that time period where... It's not out of the question. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. I think, you know, like the Giants or Blue Jays or somebody's going to come out of the blue with like a, you know, three to five year deal or something. Uh, maybe the Yankees do step up for Snell. But yeah, it's it's exciting to think about because if they get one of these guys, they already have a top five rotation in baseball. Yeah. If they get one of these guys, it's full on gluttony uh, and pretty damn exciting. Yeah, and I'm interested in the chat. I know some of you are sharing your thoughts. Curious to know if you guys would want Blake, Snell, Jordan Montgomery, or neither. Let us know in the chat. I know I'm seeing MBD, some answers I know already. Blake Snell. Yeah, He's a big MBD Blake Snell guy. Is, no. <laughs> big Blake With Snell no guy. With no surprise, MBD, BDB, I'm like, <laughs> I much prefer Montgomery over Snell. I know Barbara actually bringing up a good point in that the deal, the extension for Zach Wheeler is something that was already – in place this was not a surprise like I don't we were happy it happened today but none of us were surprised of course love seeing the details come out and it being official but that's something that's been a priority the Phillies have talked about that I and wonder Nathan if it's talked about that to get and to this, this is, next so this point. is what I want yeah. bingo see we're here Jamie yeah. so what I'm feeling like after I heard the Zach Wheeler news is this is let's get rid let's get done one more step because the Phillies and Dave Dombrowski have talked about this ever since last season, the end of the postseason, especially where they were like, listen, you know, now that once the season ended, the focus is Aaron Nola, it's Zach Wheeler's extension. We want to lock these guys in. Now that it's done, one less thing to worry about, in my opinion, it's like, okay, we had to get your ducks in a row. You got Zach Wheeler's extension done. Now go after Blake Snell. And, of course, Blake Snell is reportedly willing to consider a short-term deal. That's the other side of it. Yeah, because the market we know, isn't there. <laughs> the market's not there. He's been waiting for a team. Scott Boris uh, has been – a lot of people have said that executives are out on Scott Boris and understand the, the game he's trying to play. So a lot of teams like the Phillies have been just kind of sitting back waiting. And we know we've heard comments – Dave has made and different, you know, around the Phillies have been made of maybe somebody will fall into our lap. Maybe if somebody falls out of the sky and maybe Blake Snell could be falling out of the sky into the Phillies lap. But financially, there's two sides of this. The financial side is let's get a thumbs up in the chat for Blake short, Snell, right, MBD? Woo, even as a short term signing. If the Phillies were to sign Blake Snell, that would that would make the club have to give up. $1 million in international bonus pool funds. Which might be the biggest part Second and fifth highest picks in the 2024 draft because of the fact that Snell rejected a qualifying offer. And, of course, the Phillies have already crossed the competitive balance tax threshold in the last two years, and this would make it year number three for them. But as you mentioned, money aside, the team is in a win-now mode, and the lock-in Blake Snell, even on a short-term deal, would give you the chance to win now and push all your chips in. Go for the jugular. Don't wait. And and why allow, if he's going to take a shorter term deal and be open to it for less, I think it's a steal you can get. So I know in the chat we're seeing some various thoughts. Yeah, Dave uh, Dewar says, you know, we didn't lose last postseason because of a lack of pitching. 
Yeah, that's a fair point, but the offense is already locked in, so right. you might as well make their job easier. Uh, if you are in F it, go get my trophy mode. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the club improves dramatically if you get one of these guys. There wasn't really offensively. Like, I never thought Cody Bellinger made sense. Offensively, yeah. like, where were you going to add somebody that wasn't basically left field or center field? And, and they told you from the jump that they believe in these two guys. Uh, and they want Rojas to have the opportunity to play. And they want Brandon Marsh, uh, who earned, you know, consistent playing time, in my opinion, last year. So they want these guys to play. So you were kind of locked offensively. That was the reason they lost, not their pitching. But this certainly, I mean, if it they... It wouldn't if, hurt. If, if, they, can. Yeah, like if they get one of these guys, they're probably a 95-96 win team. Mm -hmm. Um you know, they already have one of the best rotations in baseball. Exactly. If you go add one of these guys as a number three or number four, depending on how Ranger goes healthy this year, like, <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, it's I, like, I know the four aces didn't get it done for us before, yeah. but I would love to run it back again with the four aces. I know in the chat, Jim Cunningham, you're saying of the two, you'd rather have Montgomery, but you don't care if we get either. Uh, John Dickerson saying that, Jamie, you want Montgomery because he used to get his, <laughs> you used to get your corduroys at Montgomery Wards. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> um, I, I wore because, corduroys. Maybe because Montgomery did. I've worn corduroys. I'm not af afraid to admit yeah, that. Yeah, I now rock some corduroys. I don't I like the way they, they um, like the Seinfeld episode when George gets the swooshy pants. I don't like the feeling when they rub together. It's because it's such a thick material. Yeah, it's like, like a very you like and it's feel liney it. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I know. So I'm um, out on Matthew H. You're saying Montgomery for sure. If I'm picking between the two at the right price, that is a key point that you added in parentheses. Mon at the Montgomery's right price, Montgomery's definitely cheaper. Montgomery, and you can definitely get Montgomery as you mentioned, Jamie, for cheaper. Um, I know MBD. You're talking about. Do you think it's a coincidence that none of the, none of the smart teams? We're rumored to be in on Snell. Listen, I do feel like for the Phillies specifically... Well, the smart teams are out on 160-plus million Yeah, they've already spent a lot of money. Uh, there's a lot of different thoughts. Mickey, you're saying no to Snell. Christopher O'Donnell, you're saying neither. Got to keep progressing the farm. Not worth it for a one-year rental. Um, but I will say, because Ranger Suarez also has the flexibility, I know our, you know, we were talking about this with Vince before, you also do have that versatility that you can have either a six-man rotation or if you wanted to move Ranger Suarez to be more of a bullpen arm, you have that potential too. So there's, there's other factors to this besides just, yes, long-term, the farm system and the, the financial side. Short-term, if you can get Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery and – we all know from what we talked on the past, you probably can get Montgomery for less, but you can get Blake Snell for a shorter term deal, which would be less. One year, thirty million for Jordan Montgomery, like that might get it done. And yeah. if he has the chance to, you know, I'm sure Citizens Bank Park comes on their mind a little bit because yeah. it is a little bit of a bandbox at times. But like Jordan Montgomery is going to have really good defense behind him. You're yeah. going to be on a winning club where you can probably inflate your win-loss numbers a little bit. Mm -hmm. If he comes in here and helps the Phillies get to 95 to 100 wins and, and wins you, <laughs> you know, 13 to 16 games and has a sub-3-7 whip Man. or ERA mm -hmm. and, and a sub-1-1 one, one whip, like, he's going to make himself money next year. I'm, I'm surprised his market has fallen apart a little bit. Yeah, uh, but I think that's more Scott Boris related. I think teams are just kind of sick of him trying to bully his way into everything. <laughs> and 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 basically, what this is telling you is that Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery aren't good enough to bully the market. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like exactly. when you, when you have Bryce Harper at mm -hmm. age twenty six, you can bully the market. Uh, when you have Blake Snell, who has two outstanding seasons and a lot of you know very decent seasons, but doesn't get you two hundred innings and. Uh, you know, all this stuff. And then you have Jordan Montgomery, who's kind of a bull uh, workload wise, but, you know, has been a, a journeyman. Mm -hmm. Like you can't really go out there and dictate the market. Uh, Bryce Harper at age 26, you can dictate the market. Exactly. So I think this is kind of telling you to MBD's point that like Scott Boris thought he was going to get Blake Snell a seven year, 175 to $200 million deal. Like that clearly is not the case here. So if you're talking to one or, you know, my saying, there's no bad one-year deals in baseball. Yeah. So go spend some money. <laughs> I don't care about dropping 10 spots in the draft. I don't care about losing two draft picks. And I don't care about the million dollars in international signing money. I have an owner that potentially is toying with the idea of yeah. going financially all in for broke. And how can you not love that? And just some other comments to hit on before we, we move along. Tyron, Car Tyron Carter saying, I think... 
get at some point they're going to get rid of Walker. And that is the yeah. other part of this too. You know, there there are other options here that the Phillies can look into, like moving a Taiwan Walker. Um, I know Randy, you're all in. Randy, listen, you're on that. It's not my money mindset because you're like just get them both. <laughs> with the eyes emoji I, listen not our why money not both me? um wh- yeah why not <laughs> uh, if you can't choose between the two just lock them both in but i do feel like you guys know if for everybody that t- tunes in regularly and you guys tyler and jamie know from our conversations i'm always about the now like yeah. yes you need to plan for your future but uh you go and win a world series this year by lock if, i'm just saying if you go and win the world series this year it makes the future a little bit easier to plan for because now you have another title, another some more hardware to add. Uh, so I'm all for if you've got the pieces now, you've got the, the group now, why not go ahead and, and lock in on a Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery? I would like to have Jordan Montgomery over the two if I had to choose, but it would be nice to get one of them. Tyler, I know you've got thoughts, and I know your your wheels are spinning over there. So it's, it's really funny talking about Blake Snell because he is like the biggest anomaly I've ever seen <laughs> of – a pitcher who has just won his second Cy Young Award. He's One in the, each league. He's the no. seventh guy ever to win it in, in each league. Uh, also, too, last year, uh, Blake Snell had the second highest whiff percentage on one pitch, so like the single pitch number. Yeah. In Major League Baseball, his curveball had a whiff percentage of 56.3%. The only pitch that had a, a larger whiff percentage. Take a guess. You, you know I love three guys. Pick one. Uh, Devin Williams? No, it's Kodai Cody Senga. Sen- yeah, this forkball at almost yeah. 60% <laughs> whiff rate. Um, here's the, so that's the good. And then the bad last year, a 13.8% walk percentage for Blake Snell, which was the uh, bottom six. But we've uh, talked about this. When you have a bottom four percent in whiff baseball. rate, yeah. like – Sometimes you can survive so, walking guys. Sometimes you get away with it. and, and Sometimes I don't, you don't. I don't know how much you guys take into, like, so you have to, like, when you play these analytical computer numbers, you have to, like, uh, you have to be somewhere in the middle of stat nerd and that guy's nice. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And last year, Blake Snell posted a two two five ERA on the, on the way to a Cy Young Award. And so if you just say that guy's nice, like, that's a really great season statistically. And then you look at his expected ERA was 3.77. So something's going to give yeah. with Blake Snell as it has in the past. But on like, a one-year deal, would you find out? It, it, so you would have to you're, – you're basically messing around and finding out just to see. Because yeah. if you get Blake Snell and he repeats what he did last year, even with a high walk rate, you're getting a guy who's going to strike out a lot of hitters. You're getting a guy who's going to post a really low two ERA, even if it's not two two five again, if it's two six, and it'll probably give you five in a third. And you're getting five to six innings. Mm -hmm. If you get a guy who inversely posts a four ERA because the walk rate is is still up and the strikeout rate comes down, guys lay off the curveball. He, you know, he gets hit a little bit harder. Last year, he was hit at 87% the year prior. It was or 87 exit velocity the year prior. It was over 90. You don't know what kind of Blake Snell you're going to get, and I think yeah. that that scares a lot of teams, and that's why this guy is like the weirdest anomaly I've ever seen. He yeah. is, but in a one-year, you know, find-out kind of situation, I'm not. I ain't scared. <laughs> I ain't you scared. ain't never scared. What? No. Uh, our own John Foley just tweeted out something pretty cool. Actually, he said after the press conference with uh, Dave, Dem- or excuse me, uh, Dave Dombrowski and Zach Wheeler, there they said that the deal was actually agreed on Saturday, February twenty fourth. Oh. The Phillies wanted to get the deal done before B- Wheeler's baby arrived. Oh. They knew winter was coming, and they tried to lock the deal in. That's, uh, you got tight lips down there at oh, Citizens Bank Park. Oh, seriously, we, that's oh, a whole week. week. Yeah, so that's it's over a week. It was agreed upon last week, uh, and you know the Philly. That's they have a great reputation with players and their families because you know that's. That's cool because having a baby is hectic. Uh, signing that kind of deal you know on top what? of it makes, is pretty nice. You know what makes me love that even more, Jamie is, and y'all could probably all understand this too in the business world of like, this is the, we're going to wait until it's business hours before we drop the news. Sure. Like winter came a few days after that. Then they were like, Zach, you're, are you're you on, good with a Monday on, morning right, press like, conference? You're on fraternity you cool leave. With that? Exactly. Like yeah. it's very, it's to my, in my opinion, this is bigger than just the deal now because knowing that it's like, you guys really do care. Yeah. They easily could have dropped that news on like the 26th. His wife, Dominique goes into labor. 
Now he's scrambling to do a press conference while trying to bring in, you know, one welcome in winter. But instead it's like, we're going to wait. You have your paternity leave. He came back Saturday to the mound. Now we're going to wait till business day, Monday morning, which we all appreciate. Thank you for that. And then we'll drop the news. Like you said, if, if you're cool with it, if you can get away. Yeah. So I, I love that. Yeah. Ugh, Phillies. You well, I'm, I mean, like the, 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 the reputation that the Phillies <laughs> have, like that's real, you know, that's like so Whit real. Merrifield said it when he signed here. He said, you know, this club's reputation and uh, their cohesiveness and, like, the fun they have and the Phillies, the way they treat players and their families, like, they're aces across the board. So it's... it's. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So now I'm just putting... I'm just... My mind Ooh, is, tin, like, the gift that's, get like, some, numbers. Should I go get some tinfoil? I oh. feel like I should. I'm, like, my... I'm cracking some, some information tinfoil here. Tinfoil hat time? All right. So if they knew that on the 24th, yeah. A, and the news broke this weekend mm -hmm. that the Phillies are connected to Blake Snell on a short term deal. Mm -hmm. That increases the chances of there being validity to it because they had already locked in on Zach Wheeler. That was done. Yeah. And now to hear days later the reports that Bob put out about the Phillies being connected to Snell on a short term deal, it's happening. It's happening. I'm getting irrational. It's happening. <laughs> I originally was feeling like the the Wheeler extension may have taken from it a little bit, but no, it's the reverse. That was already done. Door closed, signed, sealed, delivered. Blake's now is going to come to the Phillies, so guys. A lot That's of all. The, That's a it. lot of the chat, you know, MVD's telling Tyler to <laughs> preach. I'm pretty sure Tyler would take him for one year is what I took from that. If, uh, it's, if it's having Blake Snell or not having Blake Snell... I think the, if those are your two options, how could you not take Blake Snell? Who cares about John Middleton's money? I'm not worried cares about draft. Picks? I'm not worried about the money per se, and I'm not. I'm not just adamantly out on signing. It, I I really don't know. I, you wake me up tomorrow, and I might tell you something different than what I tell you today. But who cares? I, like, what's the, what's the downside of bringing them in? I think the downside is the the potential of a regression on top of. Um, Losing the picks, losing the international signing money. I think that's the holdup for a lot of people. I mean, even Blake ah. Snell's like bad years. Is he's going to be better than Taiwan Walker? Listen, if Blake Snell posts, uh, that's the other thing. He's more proven than Christopher Sanchez. So like, like I like Christopher Sanchez a lot, but let's we can't pretend like Christopher Sanchez is a lock to be good. So like two years ago in 2020, he pitched 24 games. He was eight and ten. You know, I don't really care about that. A three three eight ERA is still good. Yeah, I'm not going to complain about that. If he throws 130 innings and strikes out 170, those numbers are great. the The walk rate is is bad. It's it's bad. Pretty much the entirety of his career, but it That's was fine. Here's a question, it was though. really bad last year. Here's a question, though, Tyler and Jamie. Where and this is like I I like know the answer, but I want to just throw it out there. Keep in mind, where has Blake Snell always pitched for in the past season? Tampa. And where what where was he in the starting pitching rotation? It was like a, it was a one and a two. And here he wouldn't have to be a one or a two. Right. You'd have the opportunity to be an, a three. You have an opportunity to also we know what the Phillies track record is of helping pitchers develop consistency, working on, you know, the little things, and you have a chance to pitch alongside Nola and Wheeler, I think even that less pressure being with a club that has a chance, and, and Whit Merrifield talked about this, and I could see Blake Snell benefiting from this or any guy that's right there that's been with teams that are not playoff t now teams, you have a chance to come into a team that's in, forget the playoffs, contention to win a World Series. You don't have to be the number one guy. You don't have to have that pressure. You can just focus on your game and focus on preparing for a long season. So to be honest, I feel like the numbers for as much as we know in the past, Blake Snell with the Phillies could be a totally different Blake Snell. And I know in the chat uh, you know, a lot of people are. There's some agreeing with you, Tyler. There's also some discussion about. But the Phillies are you know, undoubtedly better with Blake Snell here than without him. And that's why this is and not. That's a, what this, it comes this down why to. this is not a no answer for me. This is a. This is a hesitancy thing compared to just going out and throwing video game type money at a guy. And I know you say the one year deal is a one year deal. And but hesitancy about what? Like, so what? They lose two draft picks, and they lose a million dollars in international money. Yeah, so I think that a lot you, of, you're, there's going to be a lot of hold up on it. that. I, again, you know me. I am, an, I am not a prospect guy. If you have the opportunity to go get a player of value, the prospect's value becomes minimal if you think you're in, a, in an opportunity to win. I'm not telling you that Blake Snell makes you worse. Blake Snell objectively makes you better, yeah. regardless of if he pitches like a Cy Young like he did last year or two years ago where he posted a 3-3-8. 
three years ago is where the issue comes up. It's a 4-2 ERA. It's a 1-3 plus whip. So he's done that one out of how many years? So it's... Oh, oh, one oh, out of eight or nine years? Over the course of his... Let's try to find some uh, because more definitive like, value if for he's you. he's sub 3-6 ERA here... Yeah, it's a, it's a win. It's, it's a huge and win. That's it's why a win. One I agree. Year or You've improved your team deal is perfectly fine. You're not locking in on Blake Snell for six, seven years. I think a one year deal makes the most sense for that exact reason that you're mentioning, Tyler, because he has had Cy Young pitching seasons and he has had seasons that have not been so great. I know, MBD, you're not a fan. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, like Randy was saying earlier in the chat, winning a World Series makes a lot of these discussions about the future a lot easier. And I know somebody else was mentioning, and I'm forgetting who it was off the top of my head, it's like choosing between vanilla or chocolate ice cream. Just get both. But you know what, guys? All this talk about the future for the Phillies has me excited about our future because in just nine days, we are in single digits now. Nine days, we are going to be heading down to Clearwater ourselves. We'll be down enjoying some Florida sun, enjoying spring spring training for our very first ever PHOY spring training takeover. And you guys can join us too. We'll be going out on March 13th through the 18th. It'll be a lot of fun as we're working with Vince and Philly Sports Trips, and they're doing a fantastic job of just planning everything. They've already sent out the itinerary and the details, everything from transportation to hotels, flights, as well as tickets, Plus, we have a lot of fun things planned. We're going to be watching the Phillies games. Plus, we'll have a chance to hang with the legendary Charlie Manuel. And then for St. Patrick's Day, we're going to be on a nice yacht enjoying some dinner and drinks for a booze cruise. So lots of fun as we're heading off to Clearwater. Nine days now that we'll be able to feel that sun. We'll be sun-kissed, guys. Sun-kissed down for our very first PHOI spring training takeover. You guys can join us. And all those details are right on our website, allphoi.com slash events. Learn more about it. Book your trip today. And if you missed this one, we've got plenty more trips and events coming up in the future for you here. But our very first starts in just nine days. From yeah, the 13th who knows? To maybe, maybe we'll be seeing Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery, uh, you know, get the arm loose at the uh, Bay Care Complex. Uh, and, you know, I just know this discussion is going to carry over to our Discord channel today after the show. Uh, oh, and yeah. you, too, can uh, join our Discord channel if you become a diehard. The diehard has great... Uh, offerings, you know, not to mention you get a free piece of merch with it. You get access to our Discord channel. You get discounts on upcoming events uh, that we'll be doing. There's a ton of events coming up. The Flyers yes. on Friday have a chicken and egg in Marlton trade deadline uh, show coming up. So you can go hang out uh, with the crew for two hours over there as they break down the NHL trade deadline. They have a takeover coming up. Uh, for a game, I believe, on March 14th. Don't quote me on that, but head to allphly.com <laughs> slash events. Uh, so by becoming a diehard, you get free merch, you get discounts on stuff, you get access to our Discord, and we're going to have a ton of you know stuff coming up here. We're going to be down at Bet Parks, mm -hmm. uh, down in South Philly, right by the stadiums for opening day, uh, mm -hmm. doing a show and hanging with the good people, drinking some Miller Lights. Uh, so if you think you've thought about becoming a diehard, Go for it. You get a free piece of merch, and, and I think we have some new exciting things coming down the line there as well. So think about it, uh, and if you want to, become a diehard because uh, I think you'll get value for your buck. That's for sure. And, and by the way, Jamie, if you don't mind, just to expound upon this real quick. If you oh, said to please me, expound. Yeah, if you say yes or no, does Blake Snell make the Phillies better? Yes. Yes. Definitively. Yes. If you say yes or no, Blake Snell on a one-year deal, and the what, what you're giving up is – Spots in the draft pick and internet it's in, in the draft and international signing pool, still probably yes. Yes, mm. that you, stuff doesn't really mean that much to me. So, like, I know it's I, important. I, I know the million dollars is a big deal. I, I think that I, I want to make it clear. I'm not arguing you that he doesn't make them better, and I'm not arguing you guys that if if you add Blake Snell, you're it's a bad decision. What I'm saying is, I think that there is hesitancy for a lot of teams because of everything we just mentioned. But not on a one-year deal, I don't think. I think this is becoming I a think, product of the market collapsing yeah. on Scott Boris. Yeah. So, was, like, I think, I, you know, I, the Yankees... I, I'm not necessarily sure a one-year deal exists. Like, I think that... You, well, no, it might not, but, but you might like get the, the opt-out. The shorter term with multiple opt-outs is right. what Cody like Bellinger happen. type of deal yeah. for a pitcher. But they and probably it, happen after year two, right? Like, I don't, like, I don't expect the year one opt-out unless... Yeah, unless it's, unless three. they want that. Unless Blake Snell or that, Jordan well, Montgomery feels we, like, yeah. obviously we can't predict because that. now Zach Wheeler's off next year's market. 
which becomes right. another aspect of this. If Blake Snell now looks at it, and there are some decent pitchers coming out next year on the yeah. free agent market, yeah. but if Blake Snell and Montgomery, you know, aren't finding the market they like now, Zach Wheeler just got taken off next year's market. Mm -hmm. So does my value increase next year? Maybe I take a one-year player option. Right. Uh, but that might be something that the Phillies would have, you know, then that becomes a two-year deal for the Phillies. So you don't know. I just think the more and more this goes on, like the chances get more real that they could get it done. That's what it is. I mean, it's it's March now, and Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery are still on the 4th. market. Exactly. This and is late. so because of that, there are they have to pivot because these guys need to be with the team. They want to be with the team, obviously. And so it's now being more open to compromising and figuring out a way to lock them in with the team. And I, I feel like had we had this conversation even a week ago, no. But now that we're getting into March and you don't see any teams actively, openly interested in Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery's had a little bit more specifically around the Red Sox. I personally would but, prefer Montgomery slightly yeah, more, but either way, like, go get these guys. I, and I know John McGurk, and I'm so sorry if I said that incorrectly, um, I was trying in my head to figure out how to phonetically pronounce I think it's McGurk. You were saying you'd rather have Montgomery, like we're saying, than Snell, but if you want either one, you're good with it. Just yeah, don't stop. Now same. you want a World Series trophy. I'm all for, listen, continue to add where you can. If you can get these guys, they fall from the sky into the Phillies' laps for cheaper I'm all for it, especially on a short-term deal, probably with opt-outs as we're talking about. It wouldn't be a traditional one-year deal. But that being said, guys, as Jamie was mentioning, let's continue this conversation in the Discord because... We'll talk about wanna, it on Broad Street, yeah, on the parade. And we'll, yeah, bingo. And we do want to talk through just a couple of things. Of course, the Phillies had uh, four games this past weekend. The two games on Friday, they ended up having just a win, a tie, two losses as they faced... The Braves, uh, they face the Tigers, the Marlins, the Twins. But aside from the results, because it's spring training and we're not overanalyzing the results Most themselves, of these guys that suck this weekend are, aren't going to be on the exactly. big league club. <laughs> so we're not even going to overanalyze the specific results in that. There have been a couple updates that have come around this weekend. One is that there was a cold that went around the Phillies. So there had a number of, there were a, a few guys that caught my, a bug that was going around. My children's school would also back up that theory. Yeah, it's it's happening, the especially with this time of year. So well, by the way, when, when did like, sicknesses start being called the norovirus? Like growing up, it yeah, was never like the norovirus. It was just people <laughs> were sick. And now I get pulled aside in school last week and they're like, just to let you know, the norovirus is going around. I'm like, AKA. But there's always something people new. People getting there's, sick. I cannot. Okay, cool. I cannot. It's just it's just a <laughs> cold, guys. It's yeah, a cold. It's, like, it's just it used <laughs> to be you were sick. Yeah, and we saw because <laughs> of that, Christopher Sanchez, Scott Kingery, uh, both were sick, scratched from Sunday. Mick Abel scratched from his start Saturday. There's a, there's a cold going on. It happens like Jamie's daughters are dealing yeah. with, you know, especially when you're in close contact with people. Uh, some other updates we had. Dylan Covey was dealing with tightness in his right shoulder. You know, he, the reports were that he's going to be taking it easy. Also, Taiwan Walker, uh, as we were talking about him before, actually, uh, he's been dealing with some right knee soreness, and he had throwing practice Thursday afterwards, had some right knee soreness. Doesn't seem concerned about it, but is a bit behind schedule because of it. So he just played catch on Saturday and also has been taking it easy. And then the other update was the fact that Wheeler is back, but he's back, all right, with some more money, some new money. But, yeah, listen, right now is that time you're getting guys, and as um, – Rob Thompson talked about they're slowly increasing, slowly trying to ramp up things as spring training continues because of the fact that they don't want to overextend themselves too early. You want to make sure you're managing players, but you're also, you know, testing out to see who's a good fit where. So those injury updates and cold updates, that's going to happen. Soreness especially is going to happen as long as it's nothing concerning. Yeah, Taiwan Walker, uh, and let's, let's get a little thumbs up action here in the chat. I think Taiwan <laughs> Walker, if they do go out and get one of these guys, I think he can read the room. Like, yeah. yeah th they'll probably try to move on from him. Um, knee soreness, fine. Uh, but, you know, he did eat a lot of innings for you last year. Um, and, you know, it was 15 wins. I know it's not like sometimes narratives takes off where guys get like overhated on. If Taiwan Walker is your four or five, you're in a pretty good spot. Like so, some teams in Major League Baseball have Taiwan Walkers as their twos and threes. Exactly. And we have him as like a four or five. And mm -hmm. he could possibly even get eclipsed by, you know, he could be the five. Yeah. So, Jamie, it makes you wonder, will Taiwan Walker stay? <laughs> oh, boy. Have Did you, you hear that? Yeah, no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I was working on 
on that for a little while. That was gonna ask you how long is that one? Been? About thirty seconds. Okay. I heard. Okay. I didn't hear it until you were saying it, and then okay. I was like, oh, there's a joke yeah. there. Yeah, we'll Willie see. Willie Walker stay. Yeah. But you gotta say the full name, otherwise it doesn't do the. Doesn't yeah. Hit Boo. The <laughs> no, that wasn't bad. And she's done way worse. It's just out of print. <laughs> it's just a principal boo at this point. Okay. Wow. Tyler Dooley, <laughs> will Taiwan Walker stay? <laughs> She's giving you your show title you gotta, for tomorrow. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm sure you guys enjoyed my joke because why not? There have been some uh, other updates that have been going around. One of the ones that I enjoyed most that I want to hit on before we wrap up is Trey Turner was talking a lot about uh, last season compared to this season. Now, part of what we've been hearing coming out of, you know, the Phillies for Rob, for Dave, about the plans for this offseason was also just have guys be better and to have guys, you know, the produ- production of a full season, a full season of Bryce being healthy, a full season of Bryce at first base, oh, a full season of Trey um, that played the same way post-ovation. And so Trey Turner was talking specifically about kind of his approach in 2024 and looking to carry that second half turnaround. Thanks, guys, for the jokes. I know the chat's a little delayed, and I appreciate the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. I'm here all day. Um, so he was mentioning that, you know, he feels like he got the swing kind of where it was at the end of last year. He's learned a lot lot since last year. He's carrying that over into his work now and just feels good because of course, as we know, prior to the all-star break, he was hitting a two, four, seven, six, 87 OPS. Um, his slashes in the second half were drastically different as he averaged one homer every 18 and a half plate appearances following the all-star break, but also more importantly, finished over the final 70 games including the postseason, hitting a 306 with 19 homers, 19 home runs in the final 70 games, 13 stolen bases, a 951 OPS, and yes, that is a 43 homer, 30 stolen base pace over 162 games if he can do that the entire season. So Trey Turner, yes, we are hoping that uh, absolutely bring that same level that you had at the end of last season. And for him, much like we talked about with Aaron Nola adjusting the pitch clock, Turner has also uh, been actively trying to lock into how he performed towards the end of the season, which, as we know, would be a huge boost for the Phillies. Yeah, some guys just struggle year one. I mean, look at Nick Castellanos from year one to year two. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, we're talking about guys that get overhated on, like Blake Snell and um, probably Taiwan Walker. I think Nick Castellanos is also yeah. uh, overhated on, but you saw how it affected him year one to year two. And Trey Turner, you know, look, signed a massive deal, moved his family, you know. Sometimes the human element does affect guys, and mm-hmm. he, he finally got comfortable. And I think Tur- Trey Turner is going to show you this year that he's a top three or four shortstop in Major League Baseball again. Um, I fully expect him yeah. to to be good. And, uh, you know, no World Baseball Classic. Uh, he's settled here. Mm-hmm. He feels good. I think Trey Turner and Bryce Harper uh, both being here for a full season. Um, and Trey was, but he wasn't. Yeah, um, exactly. I think is really exciting. You know, this. I think the Phillies, especially if they get one of these other guys, I think they can approach 95 wins. I, I you know, yeah. it's it's a really exciting time in Phillies land when you see so many other clubs like just kind of flailing out there, <laughs> uh, flailing in the wind. Yeah, like you know, they went out and the top two priorities of this off season were to re-sign Aaron Nolan, Zach Wheeler. They got them done. Then they brought in super utility man Whit Merrifield to kind of be an insurance policy. Uh, which was a sign of going for it. And, you know, they're getting everything done. They want to get done. And now we'll see if, uh, you know, it allows one of these other guys to come here on a short-term short term deal. Uh, yeah. It's pretty exciting. It is. It's just as exciting as watching Nick and Liam Castellanos out with Liam awesome. as the bat boy. We love those moments. And Nick was, like, trying to fully – even encourage him, go on, you got to get the bat. Like, come on, got to get Here's, the bat. You're slacking here. You're watching <laughs> like, my hey, home hey. run. <laughs> you're, not, you're not just my son right now. You're the bat boy. That was a pretty um, swing by Nick. It, yeah, it was. Whew. That was very nice to His see. His swing when he's on is is pretty. It is. It's uh, something. You know, Castellanos, had, he gave you a really good year last year. Uh, and you got two years now remaining to Nick. And that two-year window is is pretty much like world series or bust time because mm-hmm. that's the core nick will be the first signing up of the uh the you know the paid core so like you're gonna have a two-year window here and the phillies are probably gonna have a really good crack at it again next year too exactly exactly and then but on Liam, top of come that, on man you, you know unfortunately you did have on the other side um get that bat johan rojas and christian pache came back to earth um 
he's turned back. He turned back into a pumpkin nah, a little bit, but it's still it's, it's three still spring outs. training. Spring training. Uh, exactly. Nothing to worry. We're about. gonna let it rock. We're just gonna let it rock. Jake Cave stepped up though. <laughs> Nick slash Jake Cave, uh, and you know maybe feeling like he had an opportunity there with Pache, uh, mm-hmm. Kane all over the place. Uh, Cave had a decent weekend, but yeah, you know. Overall, the positives from this weekend, um, it's still, listen, lots of games under their belt, still very early. The Zach Wheeler extension is done. Blake Snell's possibly up in the air. Mopar, that's the update since you came late from work. It's okay. You can watch it back uh, because it's been a very uh, exciting start to our Monday, and it's only Monday, and we've got much more to talk about as the week progresses. I know we didn't even get a chance to hit on Brian Snitker's comments about playoffs. We're complaining about playoffs. Uh, but we'll have to get into that a little bit later on this week, Jamie. Yeah, plenty and, of time uh, to rip the Braves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, those details of, around the signings that have happened, whether it's Cody Bellinger's three-year deal, $80 million contract, um, you know, these deals are happening, and the Phillies just continue to chip away, and continue to now make I moves. Now, I just saw something else as we're getting out of here. Somebody... Oh, no. Putting the words of Bob Nightingale out. It wasn't like Bob Nightingale said this. Maybe it's in a piece, uh, but it's somebody we follow. And they said Bob Nightingale is saying the Phillies are not removing themselves from a short-term Blake Snell situation even after the extension. Mm. So I'm going to stick with my conspiracy theory. And I, I don't think I'm it's in. a conspiracy. That knowing now what we know, the fact that Zach Wheeler's extension was done February 24th. Yeah. Three days prior to his daughter, Winter Wheeler, being born, they waited until paternity leave and then business Monday, 9 a.m. this morning, to drop the news. That that gave them this weekend, as that news dropped from Bob Nightingale, plenty of time to discuss a deal with Blake Snell. So hopefully, guys. So it might already be done. Hopefully, guys. Hopefully, we're doing an emergency podcast pretty soon. There you be, have it. That would be pretty fun. If the Blake Snow news drops or Jordan Montgomery drops that either of them are coming to the Phillies, you'll be seeing us a lot sooner than 11 a.m. tomorrow yeah. morning. And hypothetical <laughs> man is uh, Bob Nightingale is a classic Boris um, guy. Yeah. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but it's still nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we do have uh, more coming up today. As Martian, you're reminding about Kelsey's announcement at 1 p.m. <laughs> oh, no, we're not ready. We're not ready. But listen, for everybody that tuned in today, John McGurk, uh, Hypothetical Man, Rick Morse, Mopar, even though you, you came in a little bit late, uh, Mickey. How could you, Mopar? <laughs> It's how okay. We you? understand the job, how but still, you? how could you? How could you break my heart? <laughs> uh, Randy, Barbara, Jen, everybody that tuned in, we appreciate you. Hopefully you have a great rest of your Monday. We'll see you back 11 a.m. tomorrow back here on PHOI Philly's podcast. Unless, of course, there's any breaking news that requires an emergency pod before then. So for Tyler, Jamie, myself, Renee, so long. Have a marvelous Monday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow, bright and early, 11 a.m. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 